in the next 15 minutes or so, we'll talk about PowerStore OS 2.0 update. Uh, so this is a new software version. Uh, the ad, uh, the, actually, it's a new uh, PowerStore OS 2.0 release that happened in uh, June, a couple of uh, months ago. Uh, and I wanted to highlight some of the key parts of that uh, announcement. And it's not just a software uh, announcement that we released a new hardware as part of it as well. Uh, so we'll go through uh, the, the, the highlights of that uh, as part of the next 15 minutes. So uh, we talked about what is PowerStore. And, and so I wanted to take a moment to talk about how we have been doing uh, over the last year and, and three months. Uh, we launched in May of last year. Uh, so in this year, again, we have got two products of the year award, uh, storage magazine product of the year, uh, CRN awards as well. And we, we truly appreciate that. Um, and, and then from a customer adoption perspective, uh, again, Shannon talked a little bit about it uh, in her session. It is a fastest growing new architecture. Uh, we haven't released the, the, the Q2 numbers, but uh, over the uh, it, it has been a 4X quarter over quarter growth. Uh, and, and what we really like about uh, some of the metrics that we are seeing is, is a couple of them, in addition to the stuff that Shannon talked about. It's a set of net new customers to Dell. Uh, so roughly we are tracking at 20% of PowerStore customers are actually net new to Dell. So that's new acquisition. Uh, and and a, a similar number is actually a repeat customer. So people who buy PowerStore buy more of PowerStore, which is also a good thing. So, so again, good indications as far as PowerStore is concerned. We have sold more than 700 petabytes effective of, of capacity over 90 countries or more than 90 countries at this point. So again, it has been picking up. We are getting some very, very positive feedback from the customers as well. And, and it, we chose some of them here, Worldwide Technology. They, they are uh, one of our partners uh, and, and they tested the data reduction capabilities of PowerStore. Uh, they were super happy. Again, I, I, uh, I won't take uh, the, the, the comparisons that were done, but compared to some of the competitive offerings, compared to some of the other products uh, that, that we see in the market, PowerStore delivered uh, significantly better data reduction. So that goes to the, the earlier parts that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and, and in general, the integration that we have with VMware that, that we, from a uh, vCenter perspective, whether being able to use vVols and how they're integrated, apps on capability uh, and, and all of that, again, in general, we are getting significantly uh, good uh, feedback from, from our customers, right? And, and that sort of leads me into the PowerStore OS 2.0 release. Uh, two parts to it. The one part is related to software itself, uh, which is the, the first two columns that you see here, PowerStore OS 2.0. Uh, and we also introduced a new platform called PowerStore 500. Uh, it's a cost-effective entry uh, uh, part of, uh, of the PowerStore portfolio. So with the launch that we did last year in May of 2020, uh, we launched uh, models PowerStore 1000 through 9000, uh, and PowerStore 500 takes it a little bit lower in terms of the market coverage perspective, and, and we'll go into more details there as well. So let's get started. Uh, so from an enterprise innovation perspective, uh, with, with, again, this is this is something uh, key that as part of a software update, we are we, we are able to deliver significantly better performance. We'll go into specific numbers later on, scalability improvements. So all the customers that, that bought PowerStore in the last year and a half, uh, they would be able to get benefits of this, right? So being able to get significantly better performance, specifically in this release, it was related to rights, uh, but obviously that helps with the overall application uh, workload as well. Uh, we delivered uh, connectivity for NVMe over Fabric using Fiber Channel. So, uh, so again, that's a software update. Uh, so customers can use their existing fiber channel switches and, and their hosts to be able to leverage the NVMe or fabric capability. Uh, and we added scale out capability for apps on. So what that means is, again, customers now can put multiple PowerStore X appliances in, a, in the same cluster. And now you have a bigger pool of compute. Now, you instead of having two nodes uh, on a single appliance, now you can go up to eight nodes in a single PowerStore cluster essentially eight ESX servers and being able to have a bigger pool where for compute, being able to have more uh, storage uh, capacity available as well. So we added the scale out capability of apps on again, software update. Uh, and, and So I have a check. Is it, can you mix PowerStore T's and PowerStore X's in the same cluster? Not today. Uh, that's something that we are evaluating to see if we see requirements from the customer's perspective. In a lot of cases, uh, again, till now, 
uh, as, as I said, there's nothing in the architecture which prevents that mix to happen. It's more of a support uh, con uh, perspective. We need to test it, make sure everything is uh, everything is, works as ex expected. But nothing in the architecture that prevents that from happening. But that's something that we are tracking. Okay, thanks. Uh, intelligence. That, if you remember, that's one of the buckets uh, of the or the pillars for Power Store as well. Uh, so we made uh, improvements from a from a data reduction perspective. Uh, we uh, we added support for dual parity protection as well. So again, the, based on how DRE DRE stands for Dynamic Resiliency Engine. That's how we protect data uh, for from drive failures and and things like that. So again, it is a significant. It is a very intelligent system in terms of it. Uh, in terms of if we can sustain multiple drive failures even without that dual parity protection if they are not if they are not happening at the same time, uh, but with the dual parity protection we can uh, protect against dual uh, drive failures happening simultaneously at exactly the same time as well. So again, we do have again frankly speaking, a lot of our customers are okay with single parity protection and because of all the functionalities and protection that we provide in addition to that. But there are uh, there is a set of customers who are looking for dual parity protection uh, for for increased availability on top of everything else that we do with single parity, and we have that capability today. Uh, SCM metadata tiering. Uh, so this is the ability to use SCM stands for storage class memory, uh, significantly lower latencies for for read workloads. Uh, so what we do is uh, you can use. Uh, so we already supported SCM for storing the user data since day one. Uh, and what this software release does is you can use a small number of SCM drives as less as one SCM drive. And, and the software will automatically identify that it is an SCM drive, not an NVMe SSD, uh, and use that for storing metadata for, for the workload, right? So if you can accelerate the access for that metadata, the entire IO access gets faster as well. So we see improvements in terms of latency uh, when, when SCM is used as a metadata for metadata tiering. So again, the idea is, again, goes without saying, SCM is more expensive than a typical SSD. So we can use a small amount of a more expensive storage media and be able to get more bang for your buck, if you will. I see a 1.2 petabyte capacity max on the 500. What's the minimum, what's the entry level starting config? That would be six times 1.92 terabyte drives. Uh, so roughly, again, uh, will use up some capacity for, for so again, uh, that's the minimum raw flash capacity that we start with. Six drive configuration is a minimum. And then based on how DRE works, you can actually keep on adding one drive at a time that's supported as well. Uh, so it again, delivers the flexibility uh, from a capacity planning perspective. And then 500, uh, as, as uh, Scott, you mentioned, it start with a very small capacity, you can expand. Uh, and then uh, you can mix it again, uh, different models applies to all of the models as well. You can mix different models in the same cluster, provides flexibility for our customers. Uh, and it has the same power store OS running. So same data services, same consolidation uh, in terms of being able to run block file, view all containers, you name it, right? So it's the same set of data services, same power store OS running on 500 that is running on other models as well. Okay, so so again, I want to, in the interest of time, I wanted to make sure I spend a little bit of time on this slide uh, talking about the, the, the high level features that we introduced. So, so let's keep going. Uh, so speed boost, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we see a significant improvement in terms of uh, just a software update. Uh, so it is uh, it non-disruptive, it is zero cost for the customers, for existing customers. It's, as I said, it's an NDU. Uh, and and it is primarily based on uh, uh, improvements that we did from an architecture perspective. We see improvements of up to 65% for writes. Uh, for what that means is for even for mixed workloads, there is an improvement because again, if you're looking at 70, 30 read write, uh, then uh, improving the write performance helps in general with, with mixed workloads as well. And, and what this really means is we have solutions and we'll go into one of the solution details uh, later on in, today, what it means for the end user is how many more VDI desktops I can run, how many more SQL transactions I can run. So, so again, we, we have done that testing. It's not just about the, the IOPS and the, and, the, and the lower level details in terms of I can do 100,000 more IOPS or whatever it is, right? Uh, NVMe over fiber channel. So we, did, we, uh, we have NVMe drive support at the appliance level. We did that with PowerStore OS 1.0 uh, since day one. 
Uh, and what you could do was obviously we supported uh, fiber channel and iSCSI. Those are the SCSI protocols. Uh, so with talking about fiber channel, you will go over a fiber channel switch and, and with, on the host uh, using the fiber channel host on the HPA, uh, HPA on the host side. Now we added NVMe over fab, uh, fabric using fiber channel. Uh, so again, same fiber channel modules, similar switches. Again, existing infrastructure can be used to run a more efficient parallel uh, protocol than uh, what, what SCSI by definition is, right? So we do support NVMe uh, over fabric, over fiber channel today. Uh, again, as part of a software update. Um, scale out appliances with apps on. Uh, again, I'm going fast because I, I sort of covered it earlier. Uh, talking about Axon, uh, again, uh, day one, we, we started, we, uh, we supported Axon running on a single appliance, so PowerStore X by uh, appliance by itself as a cluster. And now you can mix different uh, uh, models, as, as you can see in the example here, 1000X mixed with 3000 all the way up to 5000 or whatever, 9000, uh, to be able to have that uh, cluster where the compute, as, as you shown, uh, saw in the animation here, being able to uh, move compute within the cluster, uh, uh, within the power store infrastructure, right? Uh, and, and again, the point there being, being able to provide that option to the customers as their requirements change, as their targeted performance requirements change, they can, they have that flexibility that they, if they started with 1000X, they are not forced to expand with 1000X only, right? So they, they can have a, uh, a heterogeneous uh, 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 architecture from that perspective. So is that movement, um, especially since you only talked about VMware, is it the apps on based on VMware moving these workloads? Yeah, so, or... so the hypervisor that I mentioned earlier is the VMware ESXi hypervisor. So we are leveraging the, the vMotion capabilities of, of v, uh, VMware that we have today. So essentially think of it as each 1000X or 3000X, whatever appliance you see here, the two nodes really become two ESX servers. And you can actually see those, you will actually see those uh, servers in your vCenter as an example. Mm -hmm. and, and like any other vMotion, you can move the, the virtual machines running uh, in those, on those uh, X, PowerStore X more appliances as well. So that means that everything on the different Xs, the, this, the, still, the still VMware's requirements for movement apply, right? Yes, absolutely. So we'll... Okay. we'll honor the, the, the requirements from a VMA perspective, yes. So vMotion is non-disruptive and we'll do that here as well. Okay, intelligence. Uh, so uh, we, we, again, day one, we started with a four to one data reduction guarantee. Uh, and what we do here is with the, with the OS, PowerStore OS 2.0 up, up, uh, update, we optimize the capacity and performance. What that means is in, in those rare scenarios where uh, the 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 app, the host is driving a lot of workload and the CPUs are super busy. Uh, we can we can uh, uh, without any impact on the eventual data reduction ratios, uh, in an automated fashion, we can optimize for performance for a for a short amount of time, and and we can defer uh, the uh, the the DDU can be done dynamically and we can defer it to a later point of time and we'll pick it up automatically. When, uh, when the workload goes down, right? And again, there are a lot of other considerations that goes into that switching back and forth, if you will. Uh, but there is now that capability where if the applications are driving that performance, we can sustain that and we can defer the data efficiency parts to a later point. Again, nothing that the customer needs to do. From an end user perspective, it's all automated. Uh, it's dynamic in that sense where we can, we'll come back and do the uh, dedupe and compression, dedupe uh, at a later point of time if needed. Right, so that, that capability exists. Uh, DRE dual parity, again, in the interest of time, I'll just say that we do support uh, a dual drive failure simultaneously at the same point of time. It's a choice that the customers can go with. Uh, and again, less management effort from their perspective. Uh, SCM intelligence, I talked about that. So again, being able to use a very small number as low as one SCM drive and use it for metadata tiering. So use it not for storing data, which you cannot be, do starting uh, day one, but now use it only for storing metadata and, and then accelerate the workload uh, that way. And last one, uh, PowerStore 500. Uh, again, it's the same form factor to you being able to start from a lower point and be able to uh, cover a larger part of the market if you will, right? So cost-effective uh, storage choice for any business, any solution. And I'll stop here uh, in the interest of time. <laughs>
if there are any questions, we can obviously take that. Yeah, I just got one question. Um, have, we, did you talk about uh, encryption at rest or any of the security features, uh, if the drives are FIPS compliant or anything yeah, so, along those lines? So we do have a data at rest encryption starting day one. Uh, so all the drives that we use are self-encrypting drives. Uh, and, and yes, so they, we have been supporting that day one. Okay, so again, I'll, I'll skip over these. Again, these are some of the, what do we mean by 500, 1500 low latency desktops, 2.4 million SQL uh, transactions per minute. Again, we have white papers talking about all of these and, and we are seeing significant interest from the field from our customer base uh, for the entry level mo uh, models as well. And, and we'll sh sh uh, share these slides. Those, those will be shared as part of the uh, recordings later on. Uh, again, in the interest of time, we'll keep moving on. So that's where the lineup looks like today from a hardware perspective. 